Coming to imaging, the first imaging which we generally do is the X-rays, where the AP and frog-like lateral pelvis radiographs are the workhorse. Here we can see a posterior inferior displacement of the epiphysis relative to the physis. In the AP radiograph, we can see that there is an inferior displacement of the epiphysis and on the lateral view, we can see the posterior displacement of the epiphysis. In early slips, which are generally seen on frog leg lateral radiographs, we see diffuse osteoporosis around the hip and a haziness around the physis, which is called an epiphysiolysis. Next, on the AP view, an early slip can be seen as a decreased height of the epiphysis or a loss of the capinous triangle, which is also known as the sham sign. On the left side, we can see that there is a triangular portion of the medial femoral neck which overlaps with the posterior wall of the acetabulum. This is known as the capinous triangle. We can see that the capinous triangle on the right side over here is decreased in size. So this loss of capinous triangle is also known as sham sign which is also an initial finding seen in early slips. In stable SEFE, we can see signs of remodeling, whereby we can see the resorption of the anterior superior neck and we can also see subperiosteal new bone formation which develops over the posterior inferior metaphysis, creating a retroversion deformity of the femoral neck. This deformity is also known as a pistol grip deformity. Next we have the metaphysial blunt sign of steel which is a radiographic double density which is seen around the physis because of the posteriorly displaced epiphysis which overlaps the medial metaphysis. Here we see the two lines forming the physis. In this particular condition we can see it both on the AP and the lateral views. Next, we have one of the most common lines drawn in SEFE, that is the Klein's line. It is a line drawn along the anterior superior aspect of the femoral neck on the AP and lateral pelvis radiographs. On the normal side, we see that the line drawn along the superior aspect of the femoral neck on the AP and lateral views should intersect the epiphysis, whereas in a slipped capital femoral epiphysis, we can see that the lines do not cross the epiphysis. This on the lateral view is also known as the Trethoven sign. Coming to further imaging modalities, we have the CT scan. It is not routinely recommended to do a CT scan in every patient of SEFE. It is however done to detect hip penetration by fixation devices, to confirm closure of the physis, or in cases of reconstruction to determine the residual deformity. Technetium 99 bone scans have also been done. If there is an increased uptake in the capital epiphysis, it indicates a slipped capital femoral epiphysis, whereas a decreased uptake in the capital femoral epiphysis indicates an AVN or osteonecrosis of the capital femoral epiphysis. However, an increased uptake in the hip joint, both in the joint space as well as the femoral head and the acetabular side indicates presence of chondrolysis. Even though not routinely performed, an ultrasound can detect a step sign which is seen between the femoral neck and the metaphysis. So this here is the epiphysis, that's the metaphysis and that's where the physis is. So we can see a step sign between the epiphysis and the metaphysis. We can also see hip joint effusion. MRI and PET scans can also be done to detect the presence of AVN. However, they are not routinely performed in regular cases. 